Hey everybody, Dan John here from danjohnuniversity.com. You know, there's some questions I feel like I answer all the time, uh, but then I realize that th these are very these are common, and the nuances of some of these questions need repetition. And as you know, repetition is the mother of implementation, which was the sign on my desk when I was an administrator, because you have to tell other people the same thing a thousand times before they finally get it. All right. The question was this, do you have some tips on the kettlebell snatch? The answer is yes. Let's go through the big one first. The snatch is a swing. The snatch is a swing. It's not some ugly dead hang thing. It's a swing that ends up here. It's a swing that ends up here. Now, the way I teach it at certs is a little different. First off, We've already spent hours going through the swing. If you understand the swing, and you understand the goblet squat, and you understand the basics of the Turkish getup, notice I said the basics, I did not say the faith tradition or religion of the Turkish getup. I gotta tell you, man, some people just take that Turkish getup and go too far with it. Your mind was made there. When we get to the snatch, I start teaching the snatch a little different than most people because I think the key is this. When I teach the snatch test, I teach it sort of like this. There's one first snatch, and then there's the 99 after it. Because I like to teach the snatch from the top down. So instead of counting the snatch as one, I like to think of the snatch as one. Okay? Now, a lot of you might have missed that. I, I teach the snatch from the top down. And once you figure the movement and the feeling of that, it's much easier to understand long term. So there's several ways to drop that. The, that oh, okay. <laughs> Before you even think about snatching, make sure you have your ability to do the waiter walk locked down, okay? So you need to be able to do one-handed swings and waiter walks before you even think about snatching. If you can't do waiter walks, uh, keeping your bicep basically on your ear and being able to play around with different places because of, you know, the load, the load moves when it hits in a ballistic. Forget it. Don't, don't try these. Don't try these at home. There's three basic ways of dropping the weight from the top. Uh, I like them all. The first is the first one I ever heard from Mark Rifkin. And he said, as you bring it down, think that you're unzipping your jacket. And I thought, why do we even need to know that? What I didn't realize, and I'm not going to do this under load, is that a lot of people at the top of the kettlebell snatch throw the weight forward. Now, if the weight gets out here, where does all the load go? Well, I'll tell you where it goes. It goes right into your lower back, and the reason I know that is because that's what happened to me. And fortunately, I'm built like steel. No, it, it bugged me too. So a lot of people cast that bell out, and the problem with that is you've got this load out here, and the only thing that's holding on to it is the superstructure of your lower back, and that's gonna, that might make you ouch. So unzipping your jacket keeps the belt close to you on the descent. Pavel told me another interesting way to say this. He said, at the top, you mentally pour out a pitcher of milk. So my thumb is the spout. My thumb is the spout. My thumb is the spout. I tilt it, and it drops straight down. I like that one. The one I liked best in the beginning was called swimming is the kettlebell comes down like you're doing the crawl stroke. The kettlebell comes down like you're doing the crawl stroke, okay? When you're first learning, any one of those three is fine. But then comes the point where you have to do the 100 or the 200 snatches that I like you to do in the 10 minute snatch test. And what we, I teach then is throwing the bell down. And the idea is it's an active, well, throw is a big word, but if, if, you, if you go to a circle, it'll make more sense. 
it is an active attack at the zipper line. So you consciously are throwing the bell down. As the bell comes down, you move the zipper out of the way. And if you don't, good, because we don't want you in the genetic pool anyway. You get your zipper out of the way, and you let the bell go behind. Your hamstrings load up in that bow and arrow effect. And then before you even know it, you're rebounding, you're stretch reflexing out the bottom. And now all your job is going to do is to stab that bell into the sky. So it's throw, stab, throw, stab, throw, stab. Now there's a lot of other nuances, but let's just look at the concept. So snatch number one is just to get the bell up there. Uh, I use the V to me technique, so I always turn the bells, even if it's a single bell, I always make sure the bell is pointed into me in a V. So I would pretend on a snatch that there's two bells there. I'm going to do this one with the right hand because the bell's here. And I, I think you'll see it better. So the bells are facing me in a V. First one, get up there, and now throw, stab, throw, stab, throw, stab, throw, stab, throw. Stab, throw. Stab. People worry about how that bell is going to rotate. I don't teach it at all because if you focus on stabbing the bell, the bell whips around in the right place. Also, when you stab, there's a moment, and I, I'm fine with this, is that you stab the sky with a straight hand. That relieves your grip. And when I throw it back down, I don't think I even grab onto the bell truly until it's here, and that's just to hold on, which is why I can do 200 snatches with almost no wear and tear on my hands, because in the 200 snatches, I'm basically just ripping the bell for a few moments here and there. The best way to learn the snatch is to <laughs> is the snatch, and, and that's a tough one. In our gym, we teach this method of getting to the 100 snatches for the tests. With your less strong arm, or your, <laughs> I've heard the joke, strong arm, stronger arm, that's hot. But we do 20 snatches with the weaker hand. Uh, a couple of snatch tests ago, the person counting said, why did you smile at number 18? I said, well, it was easy, the first 18 reps with my weaker arm out of the 20, was so easy, I knew I knew it already finished the test. And the person did math and said, you still had 82 to go. And I went, yeah, but I only had two more to go with my weak arm. And then my right arm, I can do 20. I mean, I can do, I can do a million. We go 20, 20, 15, 15, 10, 10, 5, 5. In reality, to be honest with you, most of us go 20, 20, 15, 15, 10, 10, Ten and get it done because no one likes a snatch test. Gosh, I hope that helped. I'm Dan John from danjohnuniversity.com. Thank you.